Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes, and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. And today we're talking about how you can stay safe with your horse, or as safe as we can be when we know we're riding an animal that has a mind of its own and tends to spook and do things to save itself. Uh, before we start, uh, I know a lot of people, well, so anyway, <laughs> never mind, forget that. So, here's the trick. The thing is, we need to remember that our horses don't think the way we do. When we train them to stop at the walk, they learn to stop at the walk on that day with those weather conditions, <clears throat> with the horses being how they are, with us riding how we are, tomorrow it could be windy or the horses could be winning for her or him and then they don't know how to stop well. The question is, did the horse never learn? No. The trick is that what happened was the horse learned in one spot on one day. And we're going to be talking more about this tomorrow as well. It'll be continuation of today's video. But what we're going to specifically talk about is if you want your horse to stop when they're spooking and galloping and running away, then you need to train your horse to stop when your horse is cantering and galloping. And you need to do that at home. Okay, that's the beginning of staying safe. Now, I'm not talking about a bolter. If you have a horse that's seriously having some issues, you may need to seek professional help rather than try to do it yourself. Please stay safe. But let's just say you have a young horse. I've actually gotten an email about this before. Let me go ahead and tell you. The email went something like this. I've got a young horse that I've been starting under saddle and been riding, and he's doing really well. Been on the trails a couple times. He was doing great. And then the other day, I was riding with a friend and her horse, she started cantering. And so I asked my horse to canter and my horse cantered. And then my horse wouldn't stop cantering and kind of had a runaway, not because the horse was spooking at anything, but because the horse didn't know how to stop. And so in the email or message, I replied to her. I said, oh, well, I'm glad you're okay. You know, nothing bad happened. I said, so how many times had you practiced cantering and stopping at home? And her answer was, I've never cantered this horse before. So she took a horse whose natural instinct is to, when they canter, is to keep going. They love running. Horses love running around. We know that. She took a horse that she'd never trained to stop from the canter, never even cantered it, and expected it in a new environment with a horse that was running. She expected it to stop on cue and not have a runaway. Literally, how is the horse supposed to know that? How is he supposed to know that when you pull on the reins, you want him to stop? Not just from the walk or the gait or trot, but from when you go faster. Everybody's like, well, of course they know. Well, no. Horses don't have a magic button in their mouth that when you pull on it, it means slow down or stop. We train them to understand that. And if we don't train them, is it any wonder they don't do it? Now, you can skip some steps. You can do what a lot of gated trainers have done in the past. Uh, especially in the Kentucky, Tennessee area. Not all of them. I'm not dissing all of the good trainers, but a lot of them, what they do is they just put a really big bit in the horse's mouth and pull really hard. And that's going to cause a lot of pain. And the end result is usually the horse will stop. But other than that, if you want your horse to stop when you're cantering on the trail or when they're spooking on the trail, you need to practice cantering at home. And if you are not comfortable riding the canter, then at least hire a good rider to practice it. For most younger riders, you can find people in your area that will ride and will practice the canter for you. It's not that difficult and it's a really good skill for you to have and be comfortable doing. <clears throat> Hazel says hi from Central Iowa. Uh, Cindy says hello from Houston while well, she has power. Yeah. Lynn says good afternoon from Middle Tennessee. And Jane says hi from Virginia. Uh, really briefly, uh, in honor of the frigid cold weather that we have all across the United States and even here in Texas we have snow, I do want to point out, um, I'm not getting paid to do this, I'm just doing it. I am wearing this. This is uh, my one of my scarves from Buff USA. And I love wearing them because these will fit under a helmet. They can go around your neck, work as a hat when I'm outside doing chores. And especially I love because I ride with a helmet. And riding with a helmet, my ears can get cold. These fit under the helmet and cover my ears so nicely. And then I can also wear one around my neck. And they also look really cool. And in the summertime, you can get them wet and put them on and it'll help keep you cool as well. So shout out. Link is in the description. I really like their products. I'm not getting paid to do this at all. 
I'm just throwing it out there. So feel free to ask questions. We have Alicia says hi from beautiful British Columbia and PJ says hi from Michigan. All right, so we're going back to the fact that you need to train at home and especially the stop, but also turning. Can you turn your horse at the walk, gait, and canter? And not just by following a round pen, but can you ride in the pasture and turn at the walk, gait, and canter? The reason I ask this is I remember my very first horse and trying to ride. <clears throat> she was green broke. That was really stupid of me to get a green broke horse, uh, but I did. And riding her at the trot, she just didn't want to turn. It wasn't like she was spooking. She wasn't out of control. She wasn't being marish. She had never been trained to turn while she was trotting. And if you think about it, most horses trot, canter in a straight line. Yes, they do turns and stuff, and we see them do sliding stops and not crash into the fence and so on and so forth. And you can come up with many examples of animals turning and backing up and doing all the moves we do. But generally, they go in a straight line and they go forward. If they're cantering forward, they keep cantering until they're going to crash into something or they're finally tired. Is it any wonder that their default behavior is to go forward, not even to turn? So some of the biggest things that you need to do to practice at home is practice that softness that we talked about yesterday. And I will put a link in the description for those watching later. Yesterday's video about softness. Train that at the walk, trot, gait, and the canter. And again, if your horse doesn't know how to canter now, I highly recommend you do it, even if you're never going to canter, but know that you can stop your horse nicely at the canter. And I have a video on how to train the stop, and I'll put that link in the description as well. You need to know that you can stop your horse, because imagine your horse is bolting and he won't stop. Well, that's pretty bad, right? And that can happen to any horse at any time, even a well-trained horse. But imagine if you never cantered your horse and never cantered fast and never trained the stop. How likely is it that your horse is actually going to stop when they spook and bolt? Not that likely unless you have a really calm horse. We've never trained them to do it. My videos are a lot about training and making sure that you're spending the time that you can to be as safe as possible. It's not about shortcuts. It's about training the horse to listen, to understand your cues. For those of you that don't want to canter your gated horse, I'm not going to argue with you. There's a lot of people that would say don't do it. I'm in favor of it, and I have quite a lot of videos that show that. But how will you know that you're going to stop your horse when the other horses take off because they're being inconsiderate trail riders and your horse wants to follow? And you know that your only two options are, one, hold your horse back and have your horse potentially blow up because he's trying to catch up, or canter after them, and you're not sure they're going to stop. Practice at home. Practice in a pasture, rent an arena, do something to practice. Now, some of you may already have horses that they're already trained to do this and you've practiced great. Have you practiced on a windy day? Have you practiced on a cold day? Have you practiced on a hot day? Though, admittedly, hot days tend to encourage horses to go slower. How much have you practiced this? I see we don't have a lot of viewers today. This is not a very sexy, exciting topic. But you know what? I have a lot of people that don't want to get hurt. And so I'm encouraging you to spend that time practicing at home. Practice stop. Another thing that you can do to practice safely is practice the mounting block safety. Practice training your horse to stand perfectly still for the mounting block. I've got free videos on how to do that. The mounting block is where a lot of people get hurt because the horse jumps, the horse just moves, and when your foot is in the stirrup, you're very vulnerable. You can blow your ankle, knee, hip so easily. Even if your horse doesn't bolt, you're just asking for some trouble there. Train your horse to stand perfectly still. Train your horse to load into a trailer. Train your horse to lead and to tie. All of these things are super important to practice at home. However, as I talked about in the beginning of the video, just because your horse can do it at home doesn't mean they can do it everywhere you go. It's the, a lot of people know this. If you're going to show your horse whether you're doing fun and games like, you know, uh, you're doing barrel racing or pole bending or you're, any of the fun games that you have in the arena, it, your horse doesn't act the same way as they do at home. Unless you have my horse who loves showing off and he's like perfect, but that's just because that's who he is. Most of your horses are going to be different. So if you want to show at all, just even just for fun, you need to go to a show and practice the head down, the softness without even entering any of the classes. Practice walk, trot, canter, stop, back up, and then praise your horse when they do well. And if they don't do well, 
just come back and practice another time. Now, I understand we're in the middle of winter right now and many of you won't be riding anytime soon. You know what? I bet you can practice mounting block training. You don't even need to saddle your horse. That video is free and it's something you can go practice now. Absolutely. There's no reason you can't go do that. Another video at some point I hope to do soon is to do uh, try to train head down with uh, on the ground, like on the lunge line. And because that's something you guys can do in the cold. We don't have to saddle your horse up. But you have to practice that not just at the walk. The softness video that I did yesterday, so many people train that at the walk and stop. And they give up as soon as it gets a little bit harder. But that faster speed is when you absolutely need it. Because faster is when the horses spook. If you aren't training these safety things on windy days, on cold days, on hot days, on days when the other horses are winning, then you're not setting your horse up and yourself to succeed and be safe. If you're training at home in a snaffle, and you need to put a different bit in to go trail riding, that's okay. But make sure you're spending the time at home to practice and then maybe go to a trailhead and do the same practice without even going on a trail ride. Yes, the trail ride for you guys is the fun part. But do you want to get hurt? No, and again, there's accidents that are absolutely unavoidable. You can have horses trained perfectly and something will still happen. And I understand that. But what about all those things where we could practice and make sure our horse is as good as possible? What's stopping you from doing that now? What, because it's boring? Oh, please. Everything in life learning new is boring. It's boring learning how to type on a keyboard. It's boring going to school. It's boring learning how to drive unless you really wanted to drive. Everything, we always do things that are boring. Work can be boring. So what? Get out there and train your horse. If nothing else, do it for your family, for your loved one. Do it for your horse's sake. That way, if something ever happens to you, your horse is already trained to be safe and to do these things. And we're not even talking about advanced. We're talking about stopping. We're talking about uh, training your horse to slow down. We're talking about turning when you go faster and standing at the mounting block. Those are the big ones. Um, Hazel said, good reminder. It's something I need to do more of. Crystal says hi from Ohio. She's vacationing in Florida. Well, it's the one warm place in, in the United States. Linda says hi from Minnesota. Sarah says very helpful and encouraging. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, Melissa says, wow, something I never considered, but it's such great advice. It makes so much sense. Uh, I'm so glad. Uh, again, there's not a lot of people watching today. If you're watching this, please share. Who knows? We may save somebody a trip to the ER. Uh, Sarah also says, please make the video on head down on the lunge line. Yep, I, I promise I will at some point. I'm not even able to go see my horses right now because they're far, they're like 40 miles away on highway and the highways here are bad and their drivers are bad. So anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions, even if it's not on this topic while I'm finishing up tomorrow, we're going to be talking about more on this topic. So we might not have a lot of people, but we're talking about generalizing cues. How do you take a horse that's learned to stop and teach them to do it when you go away from home, like on the trail ride? And why is it so important? And I'll have some really good articles to share. I've been doing some research and some reading, and this applies uh, just as much to dogs and horses and other animals as well. Whenever we change the criteria, things are different. Uh, Nancy says, make sure you ride with people that will support you while you're working on this on the trail. Absolutely. The worst thing you can do is ride with people that go their own speed, that canter without telling you, that buzz your horse as they go past. There are so many inconsiderate riders out there, and I've heard so many of the stories. A lot of, one of the questions I get a lot is, well, I'm working on my horse's gait, and he gates slowly, but not fast yet. I have friends that ride, and they go fast. Can I ride with them? No don't ride with them. You will mess your horse up. And how is it fun riding your horse that's now pacing or trotting that you have to hold back because your other friends are going super fast? How much fun is that? Find people to ride with that will support you, like they said, and will ride your speed and will help you and your horse. Don't think they're out there. They are. So many people are on these videos and you find like, oh, they're not far from me, or they may know somebody closer to you. So don't give up. I'm a firm believer in training. I know a lot of people that have watched these videos and like my page just do trail riding, and training isn't their favorite thing, but neither is an ER visit. Nobody wants that. And are we going to prevent every injury? No. 
I'm not even sitting here advocating for helmets, which I do think are a good idea, but training at home is something anybody can do, and it doesn't take long. Again, in the, uh, in the description, I'll share a link to the free uh, How to Train Your Horse to Stop video. That will help you guys get started, as well as the Train Your Horse to Move to the Mounting Block. Betty says, train your horse for the next person who may get it because you cannot keep it. That's true. We never know if financial circumstances or what kind of things will come up where we can't keep the horse. And the better trained they are on the ground and under saddle, the more likely they will go to a wonderful home. Shanna says, hi from Virginia. We're getting another snowstorm tonight. Huh? Yeah. Join the club. I think we're done with the snow in Texas, but um, there's still like this much snow out here. And it's been that way since Saturday. So I think that's something of a record here in Texas and probably won't get above freezing till like Friday or Saturday. So Linda, Lindy says we need a community of people to connect with that are supportive riders of others. I agree. I love trail riding and happy to go the speed as the slowest people are comfortable with. I'm also up for short rides. Good for you. Short rides are the best for training. At some point, um, I mean, longer rides help animals get used to things, but you stop being able to train. And I tell you what, on longer rides, I check out. That's just because I don't like trail riding, so just ignore me on that one. Kim says, ignore the people who make fun of you investing the time to train you and your horse to be safe. Absolutely. Good point, Kim. I totally agree with you. That little bit of time, you're going to show up and have a horse that side passes to the mounting block in different conditions and you climb on. Now, we're going to talk tomorrow about how you get that. So maybe your horse side passes to the mounting block at home, but then when you go to a trail ride, he seems to totally ignore you. Why is that and what do we do about it? That's tomorrow's topic, so I hope you guys join. Again, it's 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, and for those of you who are up north and it's freezing cold, what else do you have to do anyway? So if you like the video, please share it and tune in tomorrow. You guys, stay warm. Stay safe on the roads with the crazy drivers, and you got this.